Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave. Is this a show and tell? Is it a tool tip? Is it a one day build? I, I'm actually not sure about which one of these this is gonna be. This is, uh, normally I wheel you guys in uh, a little bit later in this process, but I have just received this on via UPS. This is an eBay purchase. And uh, it's, it's, it's something I have always, always wanted. I think this, we could call this my Christmas present to myself. Um, earlier in the lockdown, I built a uh, rolling cart for my lathe chucks. And uh, well, I was on eBay a couple weeks ago and I saw the lathe chuck that I've been looking for. Oh, look at it. And we're about to unveil it. Now, it's not just gonna be an unveiling because I'm gonna pull this whole thing apart and clean it, make it all nice, and then I'm gonna put it back together and put it on my lathe. Oh man, this is a... Uh... Oh, oh, yep, there we go. Look at her, it is such a pretty one. So this is a six jaw, reversible chaw, chaw, this is a sick jaw, <coughs> still learning how to speak with these new lips. This is a six jaw chuck. It has reversible jaws and it is a an adjustable six jaw chuck, which means um, using these set screws uh, at the four cardinal points. Yes, I can uh, adjust its concentricity. So I don't even know what kind of chuck this is because uh, normally the maker's mark goes here and it's not there. Um, it is a D1-6 mount. Oh, right, okay, so that's just the backing plate. Uh, I'm gonna pull that backing plate, I'm gonna pull all these pins, I'm gonna clean everything. Yeah, here we go. Mmm, so pretty. I have uh, taken every last bit apart of this chuck and I've taken a few chucks apart in my time. So I'm comfortable with, uh, with what I'm seeing. And just to, it's worth showing you how this chuck works just so you understand what I'm dealing with. It's a very simple machine, this lathe chuck. A self-centering chuck simply means that all the jaws of that chuck move at the same time. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's perfect concentricity. You need a second kind of chuck that's adjustable to concentricity, and that's what this is. But the jaws work fairly similarly. You'll see the jaws have these curved markings, and inside there's this scroll wheel, and this is a spiral 
It's not concentric circles. And this sits in here, and as it turns, it moves the six jaws in or out. Uh, so I am basically now going to uh, go through all the parts of this, cleaning as I go, re degreasing and re-greasing. I've got a zerk fitting. I've got a bunch of stuff to just clean uh, and then hone. I'm just going to make sure that, that uh, there are no burrs anywhere and that everything is really nice and smooth. And then we'll put it all back together and hopefully it'll work beautifully. My lathe has been cleaned within an inch of its life. <clears throat> Here is the main body. Uh, I've cleaned out the channels that receive the jaws here. Uh, and that's, uh, yep. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Hang on. There we go. I probably put it in the wrong slot. Um, these slots are all of them numbered, and I was being a little bit excited. Um, so I'm going to start the reassembly, and the first thing I got to do is take this scroll and sit it down in there. But I am going to add some grease first. Got some grease from my uh, from working on my machine tools. Okay, the scroll goes up. Gonna make sure there's grease through all the channels of these. Sounds great, looks great, terrific. Just a little bit on the bottoms of each of these. And on the insides, yep. Great. And now this guy, this is what my Chuck key activates, right? The Chuck key goes in here and this I'm gonna to have to hammer it in, but it engages, it goes into this little hole here, right there. And I'm gonna sock it in and then I'm going to, uh, oh man, yeah, it's tight fit. Uh, just in case there's a burr here on this hole, I'm going to just relieve the outside edge. I don't wanna affect any of the, uh, the bearing surface of this because it rides on that and that's a nice, this is in still in good shape. Yeah, all right, so. Here we go. Yes, there we go. It feels good. I don't feel any hitches and it's get along. We're gonna add a little oil down here. That's the, yeah, nice. Uh, we're also going to get some grease in here in a minute. But first, um, this is a pin that sits in 
and keeps the keeps the spindle here from coming out. So I'm going to pop that in. It's got a flat side. Yep, there we go. And it is followed by this little set screw, which is greasy, and I've got to clean it. Hold on just a sec. Nice. So, ooh, oh, oh, so the set screw sits right here. Oh, no, it doesn't. What? Or does it go down even further? Wait a sec. Oh, maybe it does. It does. Excellent. All right. So, yeah. So the set screw goes down in there. And even tightening it down. Yeah. All right. Tighten it down. That's great. Ooh, that's really nice and smooth. Ooh. Sorry, I keep hitting the camera. That is nice and smooth. I like it. Yeah, you guys maybe tell me, I now see this little divot here in the outer ring of the scroll, and that lets me wonder if that's why I had so much trouble getting this out, is because that had to be lined up with this to sock it out. It is all running smoothly, so I'm just gonna leave it running smoothly. Um, but now it's time to put in this guy, and this guy sits over this and protects everything. Um, but before I put that in, well, I, there is a Zerk fitting here, and I can add grease through that Zerk fitting. Actually, let's put in the Zerk fitting, and let's just make sure it works as a channel for grease. So a Zerk fitting is this little guy. It's got a sprung ball bearing in the top, and it's got a little lip there, and it's meant for um, using a grease gun to get grease into a space. You want to be greasy. So let's um let's just let's just clean that off. Excellent. I'm gonna pop that in there. Great. Okay, so now that that works, put it down like this, get a grease gun up to it. Oh doink 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 grease gun too wide error. Okay, so uh, I am gonna just squeeze out some of this guy here. This is a high fiber grease. You can see the little strings going on it. Oh, really nice. I'm going to add some more. I'm just going to run a little household oil around the perimeter. And then we're going to drop this guy in there. This has been totally cleaned. This is a capture for that. And it's got three holes that line it up. This plate is super tight to this one, but it has some adjustability. And that's where these guys come in. These guys sit in here. Right, they sit in here. One, two, three, and four. And then they are adjusted by these set screws sitting here that lines up with the same holes that are in this one. And then when that sits on uh, the backing plate, so this uh, this interior surface marries to this, I can adjust how precise it is to this backing plate by adjusting these set screws. So this is all about the micro adjustment of just how precise this chuck is. And you can tune it to uh, less than a 10 thou. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, get this ready and put in each of these four doohickeys. One goes there, one goes here, one goes here, and one goes there. Okay, now those are in. Now I need to line up the holes again. Great. Wonderful. Now we're going to... Uh, Put the set screws in. Terrific. I'm not going to tighten any of them until they're all in and somewhat tight. God, I love taking tools apart and making them better. Okay, so, ooh, whoop. all right. So that's in. Let's just double check operation again. It's 
really nice and smooth. I really dig it. And if I turn it over, I will see the scroll move. See that? That's what draws all the jaws to the party. Okay, so now I've got that. Now it's time to put in the adjustment set screws, which are these guys. There's one here, one here, one here, and one there. I'm just gonna get these things roughly seated, not too tight. There we go, I felt movement, turning. Okay, wonderful. Great, last one. Terrific, okay. So now I've got all, this is nice and clean. It's now time to attach this, the backing plate. This is the adapter plate, okay? So this adapts the chuck to a D1-6, and that's the D1-6 is the delineation for the number of pins and their spacing. I think it's on a five and a half inch diameter, but I can't quite remember. Um, that is the surface that mates to my lathe. So uh, I do want to clean this up just a little bit. I'm going to, I think I'm going to chuck it into my lathe and just clean it up a tad. All right. So one thing I noticed while I was cleaning this up is that <laughs> this Spindle taper, man, has been abused. Uh, it was, it was uh, definitely, there's marks all over it. Like it was not well stored. Uh, I think I got rid of all the high spots. I don't think there are any, but man, yeah. Um, here you can see uh, on the interior step, the witness marks for the adjustment. And I think that actually, I suspect that I want to kind of line those up again if I can. Well, we will see. Okay. Okay. Now, you can see how much adjustment there is. Easily 20 thou of adjustment. We're going to take some of that out with some long screws. Oh. And those are going to go in these holes. So, just cleaning them up a little bit. I've been wanting a six jaw chuck for years. And I finally just I decided to pull the trigger. Again, it's my Christmas present to myself. All right, so. I've got the threads started across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we're just going to start to... Uh, Bring them on in. Now I'm not gonna get these super tight because I am going to be adjusting them slightly. Yeah, I'm gonna be giving them their final tighten once I have the concentricity of this indicated on my, on my Gilly Bob. However, um, I do want, to put in the spindle locks. Um, these are the spindle locks that came out of this. And again, they just look like they've seen some shit, you know? Um, I happened to have a full set of these, which are actually brand new and should work exactly the same. So I'm gonna replace the spindles with these guys. going to toss a little bit of three-in-one household oil into these. Just want to try that one in a new spot. Great. Wonderful. And wonderful. Okay, so now we put in the locking screws. One goes each And these get tightened down all the way. And these remain just a little bit loose and that allows the spindle lock to engage them and to get a really nice tight fit against that internal taper. 
All right. Now these should all oh, load nicely into my lathe. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm now, before I do the rest of the reassembly, I'm gonna chuck this into my lathe and just indicate across the surface here, dial in the adjustability until I have really nice concentricity. And then um, we'll do the jaws. I'm bringing the chuck over on my chuck stand. That'll certainly make it easier. Uh, what I gotta do though, is I gotta pull this chuck and that involves loosening all six of the locks on it. Three, four, five, and six. And once I give this a tap, yep, it should loosen right up. Now, every time you pull your chuck, you should be cleaning this out. And not just like that. This is the most important interface on your lathe. So you really want to make sure that you cleared out all of the possible dirt and grime you can. And keep on. One little bit of steel none in there can really ruin your whole day. So uh, here we go. <clears throat> we are going to pop this there. Okay. She's in. Now what we do is we do a preliminary tighten. Ah, see? Ah, there we go. That's one. And we do this on all six. What our goal is to get the tightening nut from 12 o'clock to about 3.30 or 4 o'clock. And right there, that one's too tight, so I have to readjust that one. That one's great. Okay, so this is the one that I need to pull the spindle lock out one turn. I have to mark that. Bring that back. It's just a lot of patient, careful, methodical fitment. All right, so, um, uh, which is the one that's the one that needs adjusting? It's that one. I marked the wrong side. <laughs> It's this one, here we go. That's it. And we'll just loosen it one turn and that should do it. Hopefully it doesn't make it too loose. I'm just gonna double check the tightness on all these. Great. Oh, one last one. Cool. We're going to try it in the same hole location. Yep. And we're going to try tightening this one first. Hey, that one looks great. That one's good. Four o'clock, four thirty, three thirty, three thirty. Doesn't really matter. Uh, okay, so tightening, tightening. Tightening, tightening, tightening. Yeah, I'm just going to give this a little bit of a... What I'm hoping to do is adjust this in and then not really have to think about it. But this will be my bread and butter chuck. So now I've got these adjustment guys here. And they are adjustable. I'm bringing these all in until they bottom out and then I'm bringing them out a half turn. Great. Now we bring in my indicator. This is what should tell me that we're in the right ballpark. Um, obviously real concentricity is measured by uh, the, what the jaws grab, but I just do want to double check this right now and get the outer casing here to be concentric. Um, and then we'll move from there. So.
Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I've oh, got to bring that out there. It's a rough outer surface, so it's going to take me a little bit. I just want to know that I'm in the ballpark. All right, I've got it within, I've got it within one thou. Uh, that feels pretty good to me. Um, we're gonna bring that over here. And I think I can put the jaws in from here. Okay, well, I'm just gonna get a little bit of some of the high fiber grease across the jaws, across where they attach, where they meet the scroll. And I've got to look at these numbers. Let's see, what are they? Six, one, four, five, two, and three, and four, five, one. Okay, so, so when you look down into the scroll, you can see where the scroll starts right there. You can see this little, that first channel of the scroll coming in. Here's how you wanna set the jaws of the device. Set the first one so that it grabs. And then you want to do the same thing. Check out the second one. You can do the same thing too on that one, on number two. Yep, that's number two, and that's number two. Hang on. Okay, same thing with number three. All right, there's three. Three is seated. Now we're coming in on four. Four is seated. Here comes five. Five is seated, and here comes six. And if I did this all, if I did this all right, When I spin these, these should all go in. However, I'm going to get some oil on there. First time it's going to be a little bit stiff, which is fine. Actually, let's, there we go. And there we go. They all meet. Isn't that lovely? All right. Well, uh, I have succeeded. I think you'd agree that my chuck looks great. Uh, I'm very pleased with this. Uh, uh, contrary to uh, the previous time, just before I turned the camera off to spend some time, um, I can actually open and close this with mostly one hand, which was my goal. Um, I just had to clean up a few of the tracks a little bit. It's still a little stiffer than I would like, but as I get to use it, what I want to point out is that there's a level of abuse on the outside of this, just like thousands of little tool hits, that is not reflected in the interior, which I'm glad for. It doesn't look like any of these parts have been crashed or munged, and many of the surfaces, while old, are still actually pretty darn great. All right, um, so I'm about to put the jaws back on. And again, the jaws, like the little carriers that hold on to them, are uh, are numbered, and you want to make sure you get all the numbers right. That is number one. That goes on number one, and that is number one. So, yeah. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two sizes of set screws for each one. That is nice, easy. Okay, number two. I think I'm gonna start all the screws and then I will uh, do the last tightening. Oh, three. Oh, this is such a pretty vise. Four. I know it's a chuck, not a vise, but it's essentially a vise. It's a circular vise. Um, one of the things about these jaws is that they're reversible. So when you want to hold on to something that's especially large, you can flip these jaws so that this part isn't here, it's out here and you can hold on to very large internal diameter pieces. That is, I gotta tell you, that is like, it's like a superpower for a lathe chuck. I, it's one of my favorite features and I've been using it for 30 years. I always like to have reversible jaw chucks uh, if I can. Um, there are aspects about them that are not ideal. I think they're slightly less accurate. That would be uh, a, an argument against them, but for the kind of, the kind of work that I do, they're just fine. Okay, so I'm gonna tighten. So again, with tightening, I follow the same procedure. I get everything kind of tight, and then I go back in and I get everything very tight. Uh, I'm gonna put the lathe on a low speed, give myself more resistance. Okay, and it's got a minimum internal diameter of what looks like just over half an inch. I'm going to get a, um, a ground something or other in those jaws, clean them out. I've got here a ground steel arbor for a slitting saw. This is probably a fine thing to grab and check my concentricity and make adjustments to it. Um, all right, she's adjusted in. I'm gonna, yeah. I don't know if you can see, hold on, there we go. I don't know if you can see that dial moving, but it is moving one tick mark, and that places this within half a thousandth of concentric, just tight. For me, it's like insane. Um, again, a note, these adjustable chucks are adjustable to a concentricity that is radius dependent. So I got an RA collet in there. That's the radius at which I've adjusted it to. If I put a big five inch ground thing in there, I'd probably be still a little bit off. But this is by far uh, a nice accurate chucky poo. Uh, and I think I'm gonna put a chunk of stuff in there and start to work on it. It's time to break this baby in. Ah, oh, can you see how happy my face is, what it's like to get new toys and to put them and install them in your space? Oh, it's just super exciting. Also, this thing weighs like 55 pounds. Um, yeah, the, the, the UPS guy, <laughs> he came by this morning and didn't get an answer to the door. And we were like, damn it. The chuck isn't, I, I was like, no, oh, my chuck is, I'm not gonna get it. And then he came back because it was so heavy. He's like, I don't wanna take this out at the end of the day. Thank goodness he checked again. Thank you, UPS guy. Um, all right, let's uh, speed this guy up. Start to see what kind of work we can do with it. To wrap this up, I am gonna chuck this chunk of tasty stock into my new six jaw chuck. And we are going to, uh, I'm going to try it out for the first time. I'm very excited about this. We've got a little tough spot there in the scroll, but that happens on old chucks. I'm choosing a, a diameter to grab that's close to where I centered it at, the R8, and uh, that should make it pretty good. It's really lovely. It's very concentric. Let us, uh, let's face this guy.
Okay. Well, the six dot chuck is in. It works. It's beautiful. I think it's my new bread and butter chuck. And man, there's just nothing like the feeling of getting a new tool in the shop. Just makes me feel like anything's possible. Thank you guys for joining me for this one day build. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching that video. If there's a video equivalent of the Clean Plate Club, you're a member. Uh, if you want to support us, one of the best ways you can do it is going to our merch store and purchasing one of our beautiful new posters. This is my hand-drawn sketch of uh, my two toolboxes that I used when I was an active model maker at Industrial Light and Magic in the late 90s and the early aughts. There's also on the far left side of the poster a list of all of the tools I had in these toolboxes and I used them daily for almost a decade. Again, you can get your own version of this printed on a beautiful cardstock by following the links below.